welcome if you are new here. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe down below and hit the bell so you get the notification when I post, which is on every Thursday. But, so, I've explained this in the past couple of videos, but I am no longer filming in front of my bookshelf just because it's not a very comfortable place to film. Um, it's on the floor right next to the shoe rack so it's always dirty. And my major source of light is the windows that is directly across the room rather than like to the side um, like it is now here on the couch. The light comes from this way and so you don't get the shadow of like everything else in our living room. Um, plus it's just so much more comfy to sit on, so on the sofa. So I'm still figuring out how exactly I want to do that because so obviously I have a bookshelf here. But these are not my books, these are my husband's books. Um, but we also don't have like actual like shelves, like this is the only shelf going this way that we have on here. So I really want to figure out, like I really want to buy some more shelves to get them on here so I can put my books here. So I can like film right at the edge of the couch, hopefully it will be comfier. Anyway, so that's the spiel that I've been giving at the beginning of all the videos that I film on the couch now. Um, but today's video is going to be kind of a two-part video. I'm going to talk about some recent reads as well as books on my spring TBR. So there aren't that many books that I have read that I haven't talked about in other videos recently. There are only three books that I've listened to the audiobook to and just haven't been able to fit in a video or really talk about. So I'll mention all the books that I have been reading and direct you to the videos where I talk about them unless they're, they're books that I haven't talked about in a video, so then I'll talk about them here. So first is My Calamity Jane. I did a whole reading vlog from this uh, book, and so you could just check out the vlog and just see everything there, including the two-month process it took me to read that book. And then I also read Lovely War by Julie Berry, Prince Charming, and Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins, and you can see all three of those, all three of those in my Valentine's-a-thon read-a-thon that I did back in February and so that I have more reviews there that you can check out. And then there's one that I finished just the other day, it's called I Want to Be Where You Are and I will talk about that in an upcoming video in two weeks, yes, a week or two, where I will have a dance themed video where there I will talk about different books that are centered around dance and give my opinion as a former trained dancer. So look forward to that. Um, but now I'm going to talk about the three books that I have read recently that are not in any of these videos. I'm also going to be showing the title of these books on my Kindle because I hate editing in the images. Yeah, I know, I'm so lazy. I'm sorry. I hate editing in the images, but I don't own these books physically because I listen to them on audiobook. The first one is Master of One, and this was my most recent finished read. I listen to the audiobook for it like I've been saying a lot and I rated it 3 out of 5 stars and here's the thing I don't know if it was because I listened to the audiobook or if it was the book I just had such a hard time following so much of it so the cast started off small and it started off with just Rags the thief and he would narrate like the first 15 chapters until you started getting more characters and then the chapter started switching between more characters and that drove me nuts because I didn't like it because I loved Rags' narration and I didn't like a lot of other people's narration and then it got way too complicated by the end switching back and forth between like five people and it just it drove me nuts especially if some of them were all in the same scene and it was just bouncing from person to person within one scene and I did not like that aspect of it. For those of you who don't know, Master of One is a book geez, It's by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett and it's a book about a thief who gets hired to find an old fey relic. All the fey are believed to be extinct. And, and he has to do it because the enchanter who works for the queen put a mirror shard right next to his heart so if Rags were to like betray him or not do something or hide something, like the enchanter can see it because he can look through the mirrors but he can also control the mirror so it can impale his heart and kill him. Lovely, right? And there's not too much more that I can say without like ruining the book. 
but I just didn't quite enjoy it that much. There is one thing I will say, it's, I don't know if it's meant to be a twist and if it is early, it's very early on, but the Faye relic that Rags finds is actually the Prince of Faye himself, and I wish that that relationship had more to it. Like, I feel like they, were, they only really paid attention right at the very end, which was kind of annoying, because there was just so much other things going on. I did not understand the politics very well. It took me a very long time to figure out who people were in relation to the story and why that mattered and why I should be interested in it, because a lot of times I was not interested in it. But there were just some scenes where it felt like they didn't, there was nothing necessary for me to learn, and other scenes where it's like, okay, I didn't quite retain what all happened, but I'm just gonna keep going because it doesn't matter. Like, nothing ever took away from the story, even though I only listened to probably like half the story. So I rated it 3 out of 5 stars. I don't know if it was just me, like I said, or the situation, or I don't... It was a really cool and interesting idea, and I loved the premise of it, but the actual book was just really hard for me to get through and fully comprehend and like actually say, oh, I understood. This was such a great book. It was so interesting. And yeah, it just didn't work for me like that. Sorry. So then the next audiobook that I had listened to was called The Inheritance Games. This is by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This one I gave four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. If you have seen the movie Knives Out, and you liked it, you're gonna love this book because it's extremely similar in its premise. It's this idea of this girl who is just living with her older sister, her parents are no longer with her, and she, you know, she's just kind of struggling to make ends meet, she's working jobs, she's trying to figure out college, her sister keeps going back into this unhealthy relationship and it's very sad. Um, so also I guess that could be a trigger warning if um, it's not explicit abuse but it, it does kind of mention like how she keeps going back to him and that it's not great so just be warned of that. Um, and then all of a sudden she gets an invitation by one of the richest people in the United States, this billionaire in Texas, that she is part of his will and needs to go down there to claim. So after realizing that no this is not a prank she goes down to texas and it turns out this billionaire has left her essentially everything and she's like who is this guy why is he giving me everything and the entire family is like who is this chick why is she getting everything hello and there's nothing that they can really do about it and there are these whole bunch of puzzles and little mini mysteries to figure out why she's being left all this stuff, you know, what connection does she have to this family, was it just completely random, did he just, you know, like, why? The big question is, why? We know what, we know when, we know how, we just don't know why, and so that's what this book sets out to solve, and it was really interesting because we just followed the main character the entire time, and so it was nice because I don't know anything about this billionaire, and neither does she, so we were kind of like learning together, um, which was really nice. We weren't expected to like know anything or the information presented to us was also just having to be presented to the main character. Um, I could never really call anything because everything that happened was just like out of the blue and random. Like I couldn't predict anything that was going to happen because I still needed to learn this is how it went, this is what the house looks like, this is how people live, etc. and so forth. Um, so that was kind of refreshing, just always kept on my toes, but at the same time, like, I just, I never knew. It was, like, so random. Yeah, by the end of the book, I had chills, and I was left, I was left with a content feeling. Like, I wasn't, like, overwhelmed, oh my word, but I was very content in how it ended, how I felt, how the characters were. Um, I believe there will be more books in this series. I don't know if it's a duology, trilogy, series, I don't know. But to my understanding, there will be more, and if I am, I, I might pick up the next book, I, if I'm not like reading anything at the time, or like super immersed into other projects, I might pick it up. But yeah, 4 out of 5 stars, I would recommend if you like puzzles or uh, inheritance-esque uh, mysteries. So. Then the last book that I've listened to that I would like to talk about was Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahirin, and I know 
I talk about Serpent and Dove so much on this channel. I'm sorry. So I finally, finally picked up the second book. How exciting, right? So I, right after reading this, I rated it four out of five stars, but I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to keep it at four out of five stars. I might lower it down to three, like three and a half, just because I don't feel as much of a lasting effect as I did on with Serpent and Dove. That may be because it was a long time since I read this. Like this was back in either January or even late 2020. It's been a couple months. I just, I feel like, I don't, and okay, my brain is so scattered right now. I always love the first book in a series or a trilogy so much more than like any other book most of the time. Just because that's when the world is introduced, that's when the character is introduced, and that's what I am intrigued by. So I don't know if it's, I just like Serpent and Dove more because it's the first, or if it really was just so much better than Blood and Honey. Don't get me wrong, I still liked Blood and Honey. I appreciated how they, how the world was expanded. You uh, met more creatures within the world, like you met the werewolves, you met other witches. Um, you learned a lot more about magic and kind of where Lou comes from because we spent the first book with Reed and where he comes from and now we're spending a lot more time with Lou. The miscommunication! Ah! If you know me, if you've been at this channel, you know that like miscommunication or just refusing to communicate with each other irks me up the wall. I will take a full star if that is what your entire book is hinged off of because I can't stand the fact that someone just decided to not say one simple sentence for an entire book until the very end after they've gone through all this drama. So with Lou, I would understand a little bit her character wouldn't exactly want to be the most trusting after what she's been through, but after what she's been through with Reed and how much she loves Reed, I still am like, she should tell him stuff. But then, uh, but then Reed not communicating was the most frustrating thing ever because he it just didn't seem to fit his character, his like self-doubt, like I just, I didn't feel that from him. That I just felt like it wasn't set up in a way that and that made me understanding of his lack of communication. It just made me frustrated at it, which was super annoying. Which I think is the main reason it's not a five star book, but you know, ooh. The other thing is that the whole book seemed to just follow a simple plot line like I was waiting for something to happen I was waiting for a big twist or a big plot inconvenience to all of a sudden stop them halfway through and I just didn't feel like that ever happened they just they knew what they needed to do they knew how they needed to get there so they did it and I just felt like like it still had that big climax to a big ending and everything like that but just along the way it was a much more straightforward path where they meet people and they come back and blah 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 and it just I felt like there was something more to the story that I was missing or I was just waiting for something big to happen and it never did. Other than that I loved the book. I loved all the other characters. The romance was fine again except for the communication thing but we're just gonna I've already went on my rant about that so we're gonna ignore it for now. Um, I am still excited for Gods and Monsters. That's the third book that will come out at some point in the future, hopefully this year, I think it's this year, I'm not 100% sure, off the top of my head, but yeah, so that was kind of my thought on that book, like I said, I will read the next one, but I'm hoping it's going to be better than this last one, not that this last one was bad, but I want it to be better. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we're going to move on to the second half of this video where I'm going to talk about some of the books I will be reading upcoming spring. I'm giving it the spring overlap rather than like a March or an April because there are other books that I will not talk about here that I will also be reading. For example, I came out with a uh, Pixie Hollow uh, TBR video for the readathon that is currently happening and all the books on that TBR I am currently obviously I want to read during the readathon. But none of those are going to be in this video. And then there are a couple other books that I'm reading for a video idea that I had. And those will not be mentioned here. These are just other books that I will be seeping through the cracks that I want to read in between the readathons and the ideas. 
Um, so I've got four books here. One, a couple of them will be their own independent video, but I'm thinking it might take me a little bit to get to them. Again, why it's a spring TBR. Um, but none of these books are particularly springy, so just be warned of that. First up is Dracula by Bram Stoker. Now here's the thing. I was hoping to save this for Halloween, but we're reading this for my textual analysis class right now. So never mind. Um, but I, so I am behind on the reading. So sorry, professor. But I'm enjoying this. And so this is one of the ones that I'm currently reading because it's a class assignment. Yay, I'm excited. I am really excited to read this, but this is something that I will be reading soon and probably won't be featured in any videos, or at least not now, probably more around Halloween. But so that's what I'm reading. And then the other, a second book that I have started is Where the Briars Sleep by Emma Bavin. And so this is the <laughs> same idea as Dracula. This is a horror, like thriller book that sat in Victorian era. And I was just sent this book. It's an advanced reader's copy. It comes out this July. I'm really excited for it. I've heard lots of good things about it. And I wish I could read this more around Halloween, but I do want to read it now as well. I've also just kind of been in a little bit of a Halloween vibe this spring, which is really weird, but it makes me happy, so whatever. Um, so this is one that I will be reading a little bit slower than Dracula because it's not for school, but this is one that I'm currently reading and will be reading once I kind of finish readathon books. So, but I'm trying to read it as quickly as possible, so we'll see how long it takes me to read this one. And then the next book was another book that was sent to me by the author. It's a self-published book and it's called Wildcat and this is by J.P. J.P. Harker. And this is really cool because it's based off of Celtic mythology, which again, if you guys know me, if you've seen my booktube about me video where you get to know a little bit more about me, you know I have, uh, I have passion for culture and like I have Irish heritage and so I'm very passionate about my Irish heritage and my Scottish heritage and cult, uh, Celtic. So for this author to reach out to me and ask me to read his book, I just about lost my mind. I was super excited. So I just recently got this in the mail. I'm really excited to read it. It's going to be like some badass warrior. Like it's the first in a saga. I, I'm so excited to read this. It's a bit of a chunky book. So I don't know how long it's going to take me to read. But that's because I really want to like take my time and like really digest the book to give a good honest review of it and also just be super excited about it. So, so this will be one, it might take me a little bit to get through, but I'm really excited to read it anyway. And lastly is another book that a subscriber actually recommended to me and so I will be doing a reading vlog video for it, but that is Raising Dragons by Brian Davis. And so I got this book per recommendation from a subscriber and so I'm hoping to uh, read it soon and do kind of a reading vlog video of it um, So if you other people who are watching this video whether or not you're a subscriber if you have any recommendations for me Put them down below. Maybe I'll add them to the video or I'll do another video like I Listen to you guys um, So yeah, those are just some of the books that I want to finish this spring not necessarily ones that I'm reading right now because I'm in the middle of a readathon but those are ones I'm super excited to read within the next month or two, hopefully. So there we go. And that, everyone, is the end of today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have read or want to read any of the books that I mentioned, comment down below. Let me know what you thought of them. Um, also, feel free to follow me on my social media. All the links are down below in the description. And subscribe if you haven't already, if you enjoyed this. And also let me know what you think of this new place of filming. I don't know if I'm going to keep filming here on my couch rather than in front of my bookshelf. I'm still kind of going back and forth. I'm trying things out. So just let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great transition to spring or fall, depending on wherever you are in the world. And until I see you guys in my next video, I wish you all a happy reading.